it's finally time to put this KLR engine back in the frame. I hope I can manage. I think it's definitely more of a two-person job. But the only person around right now is my four-year-old son. So let's see how this goes. The engine as it currently sits weighs about 100 pounds, so it's not terribly heavy, but uh, it's certainly awkward. So I've wrapped the engine and have cardboard on the frame on places where I think it may rub uh, until I get it fully seated. So it took some finagling and back and forth, but uh, in the end I was able to get it in without too much trouble. So it's exciting to see the engine back in the frame. It's a long time coming. Uh, and uh, there were times when I thought I would never get the engine fully assembled since I just didn't have that much time to work on it in one go. In any case, let's get this plastic off and see what it looks like uh, with the engine sitting in the frame. I'm not gonna lie, it feels a little bit like Christmas, although I've already seen the engine and I've already seen the frame. I'm excited to see them together. I think it kind of marks a turning point in the project when I can really start assembling and making some headway and the time needed to clean and paint parts is mostly behind me at this point. And although I do enjoy those things and they're certainly necessary to get a really nice final product, uh, at the end of the day it's not what I enjoy most. Now that the engine is in the frame, I'm starting to like the gray a lot more. I went back and forth and I almost painted the engine just black altogether and you can't really go wrong there but having the contrast of the gray and the black um, I think it makes it stand out a little bit better and makes the engine look a little bit more modern in my opinion anyway and although it wasn't planned the thermobob adds a little bit of color although I'm not sure it'll be visible after everything's assembled but it does at least match the wheels and the shocks that I have planned for the bike well let's get this engine mounted in the frame there are two primary bolts in the back, one that just goes through the frame and the engine, and the other one that goes through the frame, the swing arm, and the engine as well. So what you'll want to do is install all the bolts, uh, but don't tighten everything down at this point. If you've ever had any experience trying to get a lot of things to align, um, it usually doesn't work out well if you go ahead and torque everything to spec. Uh, there's enough play between the frame and the engine that uh, you want to leave everything loose and then uh, once all the nuts and bolts are in place, then come back and, and tighten them down and torque them to spec. So this uh, bolt that I just installed also captures the uh, chain frame guard, so don't forget to install that. And now I can move on to installing the swing arm. It's hard to tell in the video, but I've coated all these bolts with a light um, coating of grease just to keep corrosion down and to uh, make installation a little bit easier as well. If things don't seem to go, nothing a little percussive maintenance will not fix. Again, I'm just hand tightening all these uh, nuts at this point. I haven't shown it on the video, but I've spent a lot of time uh, cleaning and uh, repainting these brackets and also uh, getting rid of any rust or corrosion that was on any of the fasteners. So I'm going to go ahead and put some Loctite on these uh, bolts just because I know I'm going to get everything installed before it'll have a chance to set up.
I installed and removed this front bracket um, at least three times because it also acts as part of the uh, engine guard mounts and it also helps to hold the bracket for the um, skid plate. Of course I didn't know any of that at this point. So um, yeah, I wish I hadn't Loctited it on when I did. But thankfully at that point I hadn't used red Loctite, uh, just the blue, so it wasn't that difficult to remove. So I'm not even sure this bracket was made to be used in this uh, application. Um, it was just in a bag of parts, um, but uh, I, it, it fits, so I'm assuming it's what it's meant to be used for. But I did have to uh, supply these little aluminum uh, spacers to make everything line up. But after I did, um, everything worked well and um, I didn't have to do too much messing around to get it to line up with the bolt holes on the uh, skid plate when I install that. If you're wondering why I didn't put the top clamp on before installing the forks, the answer to that is uh, I have no idea. I think I was just so eager to get the forks installed and have this thing look a little bit more like a motorcycle. I just completely forgot about it. But yeah, if you're doing this, I would suggest that you put the top clamp on first. That way you can just install the forks like they're supposed to be installed and everything will probably be a lot easier. I tried and tried to get these fork boots clean, but no matter how many times I cleaned them, uh, dirt and grime just keep coming back, so uh, they'll have to do for now. I looked into replacing them, but they're expensive and these look in good shape other than just being a little bit of a little bit grimy. But they'll do just fine for now. So with the forks installed, I just need to uh, install and torque down the top nut, and this part of the build will be over. Maybe in the next video we can actually get the wheels installed and start to see what this thing is going to look like. Well that about does it for this video. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please let me know. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.